and uh, welcome to Ascent Fly Fishing's inaugural uh, fly tying video. Um, I might do these regularly, I might not, uh, but I thought I'd just do one uh, on my fly of the season from last year, 2019, uh, which was a, a very simplified uh, CGC bubble sedge pattern. Um, inspired by uh, the great Dave McPhail, uh, saw one of his patterns and tied a few of those uh, and then sort of decided that I needed to make it a, a little bit more robust so that uh, particularly the antennae uh, kept on snapping uh, with the use, uh, heavy use of them in, in uh, guiding. So I made it simple uh, so I can tie them quicker uh, for that purpose I actually dumped the deer hair as well. Um, um, and it worked exceptionally well. So uh, I'll just uh, show you the, the very few materials that you need here. Uh, basically you've got uh, your three little bits of CDC, two orange, one uh, brown or grey natural colour. You've got two uh, uh, cock hackles, colour doesn't really matter, brown is good. You're just going to be using the top sections of those. And then two uh, um, uh, dubbing uh, seals for a substitute or whatever you want to use uh, one orange uh, this is an orange olive something or other so also this is quite a uh, UV it gives it a very bright bright orange and drive the camera I'll pick that up might pick it up on the actual phone uh, on the on the finished fly and then for the head of the fly I uh, sort of a, a goldy glitzy uh, dubbing so without further ado let's get on and tie this fly I'm not super quick at fly tying, but with the miracles of film editing, I'll be able to speed the boring bits up. Okay, so here's the first thing you want to do, is you want to arrange these CDC feathers nicely on the bench. Try and get them all laid down. You'll see they have a slight curve to them. Okay, let's just take you down here so you can see on the bench where I'm working. Okay, and you want the curve to be up the way. You want to have one of the orange ones. Then the natural or grey one. And it's more important to line up the tips than the than the the bottom of the quill. So as long as the tips line up nicely, that's what you want. And then you take all of these by the tips take them all up together. Okay, and then we'll take it back up to the fly. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to just get hold of the very ends. So these are all nice, you see they're nicely sandwiched in an orange, brown, orange sequence. I've actually got an extra orange one in there that's been stuck together. I'm just trying to get that one out and redo this. Wouldn't do it any harm, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult to uh, keep it nice laid in the layers because I think it's quite important to get the layers right. So just bear with me whilst we'll do another little skip with this half. So there you go, you can see that now how that's sandwiched. With orange, brown, orange. You want to get, you want to get just the about length of the shaft of the hook, the shank of the hook, is what you want. A little more. And those are the fibres you want to capture. You see what I mean by that in a second. Get it and just pull them all together down to the tip. Place it on the hook. Place them facing slightly towards you. So when you roll over it, it can pull it across on the get a few. Get it going. This doesn't have to be neat at this point. I'm not looking to make it absolutely perfect. Okay, so now we're going to make our dubbing loop. It's a little bit tricky close to the phone. I'll give it my best shot without battering into the phone. And then you take it back up to your start. And you notice I started the thread, you know, a nice head width down from the eye. That's a good tip on tying most flies is to start it down the shank a little bit rather than right up at the eye. 
So I'll get a little bit of this orange olive UV. I'm very sorry, but I cannot remember where these came from. Get this into the dummy loop. So near the top of the body here, I just like to start pulling the fibers down. As I do the last couple of winds. Okay, and then we'll just pull that down. There's no room between the phone and me. Okay, so now to form the bubble, and to take these back over, keep them nicely layered up, and then just try and line up all the fibers, which is often very fiddly, especially when you're using low grade CDC as I am. Just try and line them back up. Just keeping them layered up. And again, you want to turn this towards you, over towards you a bit. Because when you wrap the thread over it, it's going to push it back away from you. If some people wind the thread towards you, uh, towards yourselves, in which case you'd do the other way around. You'd start it on the other side. So they see that's formed now. That nice bubble on the top. And the fibres down the side. So now we're going to do the, uh, the hackle quills. So just get grip nice on the very tip there. And just strip this off. And we're only going to use the fine bit of this quill. But I find that this uh, makes the fly a lot more durable than using um, fibers uh, of, uh, say for example, pheasant, pheasant tail, I've seen use and various other uh, feather fibers. Um, I've just found that they uh, just uh, get destroyed and pulled off and snapped very quickly. The fly, <laughs> like that, another one of those, the, the fly um, will work uh, without these antenna. I can't give any definitive answer on exactly how much better the antenna make it but uh, definitely makes it look better and if a fly looks better you will probably fish it better okay so let's get that out of the way okay so to lay the antenna on you want to just lie those two feathers two quills with the curve if you can upwards again it doesn't have to Just the nice. Where I mean, I'm using a uh, brown cock hackle, which is ideal because the the, uh, the quills are brown as well, which is the effect you want. And I forgot to mention earlier on. Of course, this is orange thread, but I'll put all that in at the end. A uh, little uh, a resume of the recipe.
Okay. And the last wee bit. Pretty much. Well, let's just snip them off. So, let's get a tiny little bit of the, really don't use very much of this. And this is just, it's like a, a gold dubbing with, with uh, sparkly, glitzy stuff in it. Which I think just gives a nice little, just something to just glint off. You're fishing on a bright sunny day, just something just to, just to catch the sun. Maybe, maybe just catch the, the fish's eye just to give it something an initial signal that there's something there and then it'll come in for an investigation and hopefully being well okay so pull the antenna back up and get right in at the eye now okay and then we'll just finish this off that is the fly done that simple Uh, to take off any of this uh, big straggly glitzy bits because I don't want it to be too, too sparkly and then what I'll also do to help it sit in the water is I'll just take a slice along the bottom there like that just to trim off any uh, or most of the stuff that's hanging down underneath it and the final nice touch is to put your thumbnail just gently a little bit of pressure on the top just drag your thumbnail across the top of the quills. That gives them a lovely curve up like that. You can't bit of trim on the front there. I get a little bit picky now, it's not, not necessary. So what I'll do now is uh, turn the fly upside down, put the, the varnish on. There we go. because that will soak into that dubbing there as well as the head and that fly should last a decent length of time I mean CDC is, is uh, quite delicate but uh, very effective okay well that's that's basically it let's just grab one of these things So that's it. Really nice sedge pattern. As I say, exceptionally effective last season. And uh, yeah, uh, hit up Ascent Fly Fishing on. Facebook or leave a comment on this video and let me know how you get on. Uh, if you go to Facebook, by all means, we'll post your, your ties on there. Not to be probably a lot neater than this one, um, but uh, yeah, enjoy. Oh, and before I go, I do always also dunk all my CDC flies in. This is Loon Hydrostop. You'll get all sorts of other ones from lots of different companies. They're all very good. Uh, I, I, I do like the, um, the Loon uh, because uh, they have a, a, an environmental commitment that all of their products are biodegradable and or um, non-toxic. So that's always good. So there you go. That's that. Um, enjoy, guys. Mm -hmm.